Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education. Supervisor of Special Education Services, interview question number one. And here is a question that is frequently asked. How do you handle a veteran teacher that refuses to follow a student's IEP? Now, there are many acceptable answers to this question, but here are just a few possible responses. First up, understand the teacher's motivation for refusal. Oftentimes, it is a passionate teacher that may have a problem with the student's IEP. Talk with the teacher to find the main reasons why they refuse to follow it. Second, explain the importance of adherence to an IEP. Following an individualized education plan is not a choice for teachers. An IEP is a legal document and teachers are on the hook for its implementation. Next up, disciplinary action if refusal persists. Refusal of IEP implementation is a serious thing. You will have to discipline the teacher at the very least to protect the school from legal suit being filed against it. And lastly, remove the teacher from the classroom. Never remove the student from the classroom in this situation. The child is not to be removed if the teacher is derelict in their duty. So remove the teacher, not the child. And here's a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Maintain eye contact during the interview. Looking the interview committee in the eye shows confidence. Interview question number two. And here's a question that is frequently asked. How do you plan to manage paraprofessionals and what are your expectations for them? There are many answers to this question, but here are a few possible responses. First off, define their responsibilities. Some teachers are uncomfortable telling paraprofessionals what to do, but it's ultimately the supervisor's responsibility to clearly define their responsibilities. Second, alternate their assignments. Paraprofessionals often get too close to the students and too comfortable with the teachers. Alternating assignments for paraprofessionals help break those patterns. Third on the list, monitor their performance and work. This question deals with management and that begins with the monitoring of staff members. Be sure paraprofessionals are doing their duties. Next up, have staff model proper behavior. Many paraprofessionals are new to the education workforce, so teachers and supervisors must model proper behavior for better understanding. And lastly, have paraprofessionals assist students without them developing dependent. A continuous problem is special education students becoming too dependent on paraprofessionals. Have teachers ensure that students are not relying on paraprofessionals to do their work. And here is a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Take a second to think before you respond. Don't just blurt something out because you're afraid you took too long. Interview question number three. And here's a question that is frequently asked. How do you plan on helping emotionally and behaviorally disturbed students? Now, there are many acceptable answers to this question, but here are just a few possible responses. First off, student wraparound services. Wraparound services are comprised of a number of individuals that specifically care about the student in question with emotional and behavioral disabilities. Teamwork makes a difference. Second, behavior intervention plans. Just as instruction is differentiated for students of all different levels of readiness and abilities, behavior expectations should be differentiated as well. Third on the list, relationship building Teacher-student relationships is arguably one of the most important factors to student success. Look to help teachers form bonds with their students. Next up, appropriate academic goals for each student. When students are unable to complete work, they often act out. Students will look to avoid work when they are unable to do it. And lastly, 
Make sure teachers have put clear expectations in place. Do not expect students to already know how to behave. Students must be taught how to behave. They must also know what is acceptable as well. Here is a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Whether you know or you don't know, speak confidently. Use words that convey confidence. Speak as if you are in authority. Interview question number four. And here is a question that is frequently asked. How can you facilitate the collaboration of general education and special education teachers? Now there are many acceptable answers to this question, but here are just a few possible responses. First off, offer common planning time for co-teachers. This is important for giving teachers a chance to get on the same page. It will also provide time for special and general education teachers to share teaching practices. Second, establish roles and responsibilities for both teachers. When roles and responsibilities are unclear, teachers begin to think the other teacher is lazy or derelict in their duty. Third on the list, re-evaluate relationships as time moves on. Working relationships often start off well, but as time goes on, new problems come about. Therefore, always reevaluate relationships to new issues. And lastly, find the best fit co-teaching model for special education and general education teachers. There are many different models for co-teaching. Several of the models are listed below. But when choosing a model, think of both the teacher's strengths and the teacher weaknesses. Always look for what's best for the students. Here is a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Arrive at least 15 minutes early. Arriving early gives you time to settle down and show punctuality. Interview question number five. Here's a question that is frequently asked. What types of strategy would you use for special education students struggling in mathematics? There are many acceptable answers to this question, but here are just a few possible responses. The first strategy should be concrete instruction. Concrete instruction model uses concrete symbols that express a concept. It's a three part system that includes concrete, representational, and the abstract. Second is to use problem solving strategies. Having special education students learn problem solving strategies will help them excel on higher order thinking questions. Third up, real world relevance. Research has shown increase in student engagement when the mathematics they learn is related to real world situations and problems. Fourth on the list, Peer tutoring of students. Peer tutoring can help both students. The struggling student will benefit from hearing a different voice than the teacher, and the tutor will deepen their understanding through explaining the material to the struggling student. And lastly, set high standards. Teachers must set high standards for special education students. Teachers must not dumb down the material. Set the bar high and you won't be disappointed. Here is a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Study, study, study. In fact, take notes on special education content and carry the note card around with you. Right now I want to say thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel as more questions will be added, so don't miss out. I'll definitely be adding more supervisor interview questions. Also, I will post a link in the description below with more questions in a document sometime soon. Thank you very much.